Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm testing out a few tools that were recently launched, including the latest Parkside Impact Wrench, which is a disaster, the new 12 volt Parkside Blower, and the Thermal Master P3 Thermal Camera, which I'll be using to take a deeper look inside these tools. Alright then, we've got a bunch of tools to get through today, but let's start off with the cheapest one on the list. This digital caliper only cost me 8 euros and it's been a fantastic purchase. I've already put it to good use in a recent project in which I made the cheapest subcompact quarter inch impact wrench, which you can check out right here. Next up, let's take a look at this, the newest 20 volt Parkside impact wrench. This is the C4 model made by Owen, and it sent me back just under 100 euros. Now, that price does include a battery and a charger, which is nice, but it also comes with a set of, well, let's say questionable sockets at best. I find it hard to believe that anyone in Germany is buying this one, since the performance version, which has much more power, was on sale for the same price. But in other countries where prices vary, it might still be worth considering. So let's see how it actually performs by putting it head to head with its older cousin, the B2 version from Grizzly Tools. And right away you can hear a difference in the sound these two make. But let's not go by just that. Time for some real testing to see if there's an actual performance gap. 150 newton meters. That's the torque I've set these wheel bolts to for the first test. It's a best case scenario for freshly tightened wheel bolts, and if the tools struggle here, well, that's not really a good look, is it? But wheel bolts aren't the only thing these impact wrenches are good for. Sure, they might be a bit down on power, but they are still a surprisingly dependable tool for a lot of other jobs. So, let's start off with the C4 version first, which is set to full power and it's running a fully charged 4 amp battery. Well, that wasn't great if I'm honest. But then again, this isn't an F1 pit stop, so as long as you're happy with the result, there's nothing much to complain about. And just to be sure though, let's tighten the bolts back up to 150 newton meters and see how the older B2 version performs, which will be running on full power and the same 4 amp battery, which is now down a bar. And well, yes, that is a pretty big difference, but you haven't seen anything yet. Let's repeat the same test, but this time at 200 newton meters. But that does need a bit of context. The reason I'm doing this on a car is because the aluminium wheels tend to stick to the bolts, making them harder to loosen. For other tasks though, like the ones I've shown in previous videos where an aluminium wheel isn't involved, these impact wrenches can actually reach up to around 400 newton meters. So really, it depends on what you're using them for. So first up for the 200 newton meter test on the aluminium wheel, we've got the new C4 impact wrench. The first lug bolt took a bit of effort, but eventually it did come loose. Unfortunately, that's about as far as it got. Bolts two and three didn't budge at all. So realistically, this isn't the tool you want to rely on when switching from your summer tires to your winter ones. And so after that less than ideal result, I reset the lug bolts back to 200 newton meters and grab the B2 version along with the same 4 amp hour battery now sitting at about 50% charge. And while the B2 took its time, it did manage to get all three lug bolts undone in the end. To be fair, with a fully charged battery, it probably would have done it even quicker. Now let's tighten those bolts back up to 200 newton meters once more. And let's bring in this thing, the Parkside Performance A1 impact driver, which I've modified with a half inch handle. It's set to max power, but the battery is already at less than 50%. Yeah, well, that was quite the difference, right? Just goes to show you what they could have made if they really wanted to. All right, now let's take these apart and see where the real differences are. But this time we're going deeper than just the mechanical stuff. With this, the Thermal Master P3 Thermal Imaging Camera. I have already reviewed a standalone Thermal Master camera here on the channel, which was the Thor 002, 
and I found it to be fantastic for the price. But now, let's see how this new P3 thermal camera stacks up. It works on both iOS and Android devices, which is a good start, and it has its own app, which I find very well made. But before we go any further, I need to share this for full disclosure. Thermal Master did send me this camera for review, and I didn't pay for it. But as you can probably tell from the format of this video, they've had absolutely no input in what I say or show here. All opinions and testing are entirely my own, and I don't earn commissions from sales, and I haven't received any payment from them in any way, shape, or form. That said, if you end up liking what you see, I'll leave a link and a discount code down in this video's description. Now, let's talk about the unboxing experience and what you can learn about a product from the box it comes in. As a general rule, the better the packaging looks and feels, the more premium the product usually is. And judging by the job they've done here, both with the box and with what's inside, this unboxing feels like a proper event. Even the USB cable and the manual come in their own little boxes inside the main one, which just adds to the whole experience. Then you get her camera itself, neatly packed into a really well-made case. Inside, it's perfectly protected. And apart from the camera, you also find a USB-C to lightning adapter. So it's ready for pretty much any device. And you already know how much I love peeling stickers. So yeah, I couldn't resist this one. The build quality of the camera is honestly astonishing. The metal body and the small design details, everything about it just feels premium. Even the focusing action feels unbelievably smooth for such a small camera and lens. It's actually hard to appreciate how well built this thing is just through the screen, because once you hold it, you immediately realize it's genuinely a premium product. Now, let's plug it in, shall we? You get a wide range of color palettes to choose from, everything from lava red to rainbow. Besides that, the camera is super useful for things like plumbing work and HVAC. But thanks to its adjustable lens, it's also perfect for PCB inspections, which just so happens to be the main focus of this video. Alright, now let's get back to these two impact wrenches. I took them apart off camera and the newer model ended up on the right while the older one is on the left. However, at first glance, there isn't a huge difference between them, is there? The batteries are also nearly identical, apart from the positioning of the charge level indicators, that is. Interestingly, the cells inside the older battery are branded Parkside, while the cells in the newer one say both Parkside and Sun Power. But in both cases, they're nearly identical looking 18650 cells. Now, when it comes to the hammer assemblies, the newer model actually has a slightly heavier one than the older version. But somehow, it still feels like it's the weaker tool. So, let's dig a bit deeper then. So, here's the main difference in construction between these two. This part right here. On the older tool, it forms part of the front casing and it's made of metal. On the newer one, however, they've probably tried to cut costs because it's made of plastic instead. With everything else being pretty much the same, my guess is that the plastic might flex a bit more under impact and that could be reducing the force transfer from the hammer to the anvil. But that's not all. Now that I've got this thermal camera, let's take things a step further and look into the electronics as well. And just to be clear, I'm no electronics expert, but we can all take a look at the temperature readings and draw our own conclusions. And as always, feel free to correct me down in the comments if you've got a better explanation. Alright now, let's dive in. The first images show the control boards of both tools. Now, they're only spinning their motors here, not actually trying to break a wheel wall loose. But even so, there's a clear difference in control board temperature. And with these tools being a bit underpowered, but hopefully reliable, you'd hope that they'd have at least tried to improve the cooling on the newer model. But no, that one's actually running hotter. Not great, considering the control board is probably the most common failure point on these tools. I'm not entirely sure why, maybe it's just me. But even though the motors are identical, there's actually a temperature difference there too. So no matter how I look at this newer model, it just doesn't feel ideal. I don't mind an underpowered impact range as long as it's built solid, but this new C4, well, it just doesn't give me that same confidence. But I guess only time will tell. All right, and now let's move on to this, the new Parkside 12 volt blower and duster, which seems to make some pretty big claims about its wind speed. This is a brand new tool from Parkside, model PA UKGB A1, 
and it cost me just 20 euros, which is even less than some of the blowers you'll find on AliExpress or Chibu. The handle on this thing can actually rotate, which is great because that way you can use it to both vacuum things up and to blow them away. It charges via a USB-C, so unfortunately no X12 team battery here. The battery is built in. The whole thing weighs just under 500 grams and it feels fairly solid. It definitely doesn't feel cheap, but I also wouldn't call it premium. Now with a fully charged battery and set to max power, let's see what it can do. Using the smallest diameter nozzle, it reaches around 20 grams on the weigh scale. Anything higher than that is just me bumping the scale by accident when I try to get too close. Without a nozzle and holding it as close as possible, it hits roughly 70 to 80 grams before I get too close and touch the weigh scale again. You can compare those numbers to some of the blowers tested by the Torque Test channel, but it's nowhere near them. But it also doesn't cost anywhere near the price of those things. And in terms of noise, as long as you're not pinpointing the airflow directly at the decibel meter, it's not too loud for what it is. Sure, it's a bit noisy, but definitely not ear piercing. It's got enough power to handle some simple jobs, though it doesn't perform as well in the water on the car test compared to some other tools. But to be fair, the paint does play a role there. It moves water off newer paint much faster than off older surfaces. It's not quite as powerful as I was hoping, but it still has its uses. If you just need to blow away a bit of dust, it's perfectly fine, especially for the price. As for using it as a vacuum cleaner though, I wouldn't bother. It might pick up a few biscuit crumbs, but not much else. So I definitely wouldn't rely on it for cleaning. Now, let's open it up and see what's hiding inside. And once you open it up, you realize it's actually one of the most basic designs you'll come across. Inside, there are three sun power cells, which make up the 12 volt to amp hour rating. Next to them is a simple control board connected to a simple on and off switch and a few LEDs for light, power and battery charge. Finally, all noise and airflow come from a regular brushed motor. Now that we've got the Thermal Master P3 on the scene, we can actually see how heat moves through this thing. As you'd expect, the coldest part is the fan, while the hottest spots are around the brushes and the rotor bearings. And actually, there is roughly a 30 degree difference between the temperature of the brushes and the temperature of the fan, which is something I found really interesting to see. Now, let me show you how heat moves through the control board once you switch this thing on. Admittedly, the video is a bit out of focus since I had to hold the blower, but it's still good enough to see what's happening. You can actually get much better results with a thermal camera if both the camera and the device you're testing on are on a stable platform instead of holding everything in your hands and moving it all over the place. So then, what's the final verdict on this? Well, honestly, I think it's partially my fault for being a bit disappointed with the output. I mean, for 20 euros, we probably expected a bit too much out of it, didn't we? It's no violin fan or anything like that, but for cleaning out dust from your computer or some sawdust in a workshop, it should do the job, given enough time. So, I don't think it's that bad, actually, especially for the price. But I want to know what you think. If you bought one of these, drop a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. This next item I picked up on sale for just 10 euros a while back. It's the 20 volt Parkside work light. I already have a 12 volt version, plus a few other work lights with built in batteries that work really well. But I've always preferred having one with a replaceable battery. And for 10 euros, I just couldn't pass it up. I specifically wanted a 20 volt model, so I'd have a work light for both my Parkside battery platforms. Sure, it's not as small or as maneuverable as some of my other work lights because of that bulky 20 volt battery, but on the upside, that same battery gives it a nice stable base. Despite its size, the big win here is how good it is at simply, well, being a light. It's bright enough to work comfortably, but still soft enough not to strain your eyes over longer periods. It's definitely worth 10 euros I paid for it. And with all that illumination talk, I can finally show you my car through the lens of the thermal camera. You can see the brake discs glowing hot, the aluminium wheels holding some heat, while the plastic hubcaps, which are mostly out of the way of all that heat, stay noticeably cold. But what really stands out is the engine, because it shows an even spread of heat across both the engine and radiator. In this case, that means everything's running smoothly, but if there were a cooling issue, this thermal view should have made it easier to spot. And how about this for a fantastic tool deal? The Parkside 20 volt drill driver kit for just 25 euros. Yeah, you heard that right. A full kit with a drill driver, a 2 amp hour battery, and a 2.4 amp charger, all for 25 euros. Plus, it even comes with a 3 year warranty, and you'll get a small box of bits included. 
The tool itself is extremely simple. It uses a brushed motor and a basic two-speed gearbox with a clutch. A simple, proven design that just works. For 25 euros, you really cannot go wrong with this for occasional DIY use. But what's interesting here is actually the battery it comes with. It's a 2 amp hour 20 volt pack made by Grizzly Tools. And I've got another one just like it, though that one is made by Compadas. Both are brand new 2025 batteries, so I wanted to see if there are any differences inside. So, let's open them up and find out. So then, here we are. And right away, apart from maybe the size of the fuses they use, the main difference between these two batteries is that one has a layer of gel on the control board, while the other one doesn't. It's probably there to discourage you from poking around with the electronics, but we'll take a closer look at that in a second. Another difference is in the battery cells. Both use the same type cells, but one has sun power cells, while the other one uses cells from a company I'll just call New Energy for short. They're probably identical in performance, but it's just interesting to know that they come from different manufacturers. Now, let's get back to that gel, and let's take a closer look through the P3 thermal camera. And feel free to correct me if I'm wrong here, but it looks like the gel helps spread the heat more evenly. And there's a chance it even assists with heat dissipation, rather than just getting in the way if you ever try to repair the control board. The overall temperature is about the same on both images, but on the Grizzly Tools battery, the gel seems to distribute the heat much more evenly than on the other pack. And if you're curious about how this basic drill driver performs against its brushless cousin, you can check out this video right here. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like, consider subscribing and drop the comment down below.